Do you remember this from a few months ago? The week that this guy, dressed in what can only be described as a cagoule and looking like a, a cross between a geography teacher and a member of an Oasis tribute band, took on the government and embarrassed Boris Johnson. I don't want to sound too much like a Andy Burnham fanboy, not least because he is a diehard Evertonian and I'm a lifelong Liverpool supporter, but his defiant stance in defence of his city and its interest got me thinking. Around about the same time, Belfast was facing a similar threat that it would be put in a different level of lockdown compared to the rest of Northern Ireland. And whilst we had lots of people raising their concerns about what that might mean, we didn't have that one single powerful go-to voice like Manchester speaking up for our city's interest. That made me wonder, what if Belfast had a directly elected mayor? What if we had an Andy Burnham of our own? Actually, since I started my new role with Belfast Chamber just over a year ago, it's something that's been swirling around in my mind for quite some time. Not so much the idea of a directly elected mayor, more the need to empower our city. I think we can all agree that Belfast is blessed to have a civic building as beautiful as a city hall. It exudes a certain authority, a stature that suggests that beneath its dome, power resides. When it first opened in 1905, that was an accurate impression. In the preceding century, Belfast had grown from little more than a small village to an industrial powerhouse that many considered to be the second city of Queen Victoria's empire. Our city fathers set about building a place worthy of such a status. As well as constructing the city hall itself, they, the Belfast Corporation and other city institutions built a 50 mile long tram system more than 100 years before the glider. They delivered thousands of social housing units decades before the term social housing even existed. And in a feat of engineering that would be amazing even today, they put in place the essential infrastructure that still brings tap water to our city from miles and miles away up in the Mourne Mountains. Fast forward to now, and the building is still the same, but that power to fundamentally shape our city simply isn't there anymore. Now, don't get me wrong, we have a great council uh, that takes its civic leadership role seriously and has set out an ambitious vision for our city in the Belfast agenda. But I'd suspect that there would be few councillors who would disagree with me that for a city of its size, of its regional importance and its economic significance, Belfast does not possess the same powers as our competitor cities elsewhere on these islands and across Europe enjoy. And for me, it's an issue that has been amplified during the pandemic. This awful interlinked health and economic emergency has made many of us rethink what cities are for and how they will survive and thrive in the years ahead. Mayors and councils around the world have seized the opportunity created by the coronavirus crisis to reimagine their cities. Milan, one of the cities hit hardest by COVID-19, announced back in April that it was, whilst it was still in the middle of a shutdown, that it was creating 35 kilometres of new walking and cycling space. Paris is investing 300 million euros in its cycling infrastructure. And in San Francisco, they have converted car parking spaces into more than 100 parklets for cafes and restaurants to use whilst indoor space is limited because of social distancing. Here in Belfast, we have at least made a start. The council has constructed a pop-up play park at Cathedral Gardens. Some temporary bike lanes have been built and we have created one parklet on the Ormo Road. Much more ambitious plans exist and I'm confident that many of them will be implemented. But it has been a slow and sometimes painful process and a disjoin between Stormont and City Hall has been a factor. The big difference between Belfast and those other cities that I have mentioned 
isn't a lack of vision, it's a lack of power. How we empower cities like Belfast is something that we can debate and discuss. It could be anything from a directly elected mayor to a wider metropolitan authority to simply devolving more powers to City Hall. The, the how isn't the issue, it's the why. And that's all about aligning that vision with the powers to deliver it so that our city can continue to attract talent and investment and better reflect the desires of an increasingly diverse population. In his new book, uh, The Nation City, Rahm Emanuel argues that cities are now the crucible of innovation when it comes to public policy. Whether it's transportation or the environment or the economy, he suggests that cities can be more immediate, intimate and impactful. And that's exactly what we need in Belfast. Belfast, like cities everywhere, is in the midst of a massive challenge. Others loom large on the horizon. If we want to move forward, if we want to help our city to rebuild economically and socially post-pandemic, if we want to reshape our city so that it is an even better place to live, work and play, and if we want our city to be ready to face future challenges like climate change, then perhaps we need to give back powers to our city.